It affects white-tailed deer more than mule deer. The disease also impacted the success of hunters during last November's gun season. For a third time, the Minnesota State High School League has voted against adding boys' volleyball as a sanctioned sport. Porter Al Shock says the vote was close. 31-17, one vote short of approval. Last spring's vote was too short. Boys' volleyball is a club sport among Minnesota's high school-age student-athletes. Officials say there are 55 club teams in Minnesota with about 1,400 boys taking part. The effort to sanction boys' volleyball as a high school sport has received some high-level support, including University of Minnesota volleyball coach Hugh McCutcheon, along with Governor Walls and First Lady Gwen Walls, whose son plays club volleyball. Minnesota has offered girls' volleyball as a sanctioned sport since 1974. A man facing a possible life sentence on federal drug and money laundering charges has won the lottery in South Dakota. 45-year-old Canby Thompson was featured on the state lottery's website for winning $40,000 on a scratch-off ticket. Thompson earlier pleaded guilty to the charges, which resulted from a drug bust in Sioux Falls involving 11 pounds of methamphetamine and seven other people. When police pulled Thompson over last year, they found drugs in his car. He also admitted he was part of a money laundering scheme to hide drug money. Fargo, Moorhead, near 70 are high this afternoon. A mostly sunny sky, partly cloudy overnight, 50. Tomorrow, 76 in the afternoon, partly sunny, shower and thunderstorm chances. That extends into Thursday, partly sunny, breezy, a good chance of showers and thunderstorms in 80. Friday, partly sunny, 70 the high. Fargo, Moorhead, now 68. Paul Jergens, News Radio, KFGO. It is Tuesday and the sun is shining. Everything a guy could ask for right now. In fact, it looks like it's going to be a pleasant afternoon, and I will get you to that 5 o'clock punch out together right here on KFGO. I'm Tyler Axinus, and this is Afternoons Live. A number of things we're going to be getting to today uh, one about the flooding conditions, uh, overland flooding that is, right here in the eastern part of the state, what it means for your roads. We've seen some of those fields and what that means for agriculture or farmers. All that's coming up, but you know what? About once a month, we try to get North Dakota's lone congressman on to visit with you and I. His name's Kelly Armstrong, and he joins us right now here on KFGO. Congressman, how are you doing? I am doing okay, Tyler. How are you? Doing, uh... You your deer app in? Uh, no, that's a great reminder. That deadline is uh, approaching about a month from now. I'm going to write that down, deer application. That's a reminder for all y'all out there. Did you get a deer last year? Uh, no, I didn't get a deer last year. Yeah, well, that, that. I we, we uh, but I had two kids with tags, so I had a lot of fun. Okay, well, yeah, and it's all about that uh, that experience and getting them uh, acquainted. I was more early. excited about I was more excited white tail doe than I was about anything I've done deer hunting in North Dakota in a very long time. So tells you what it's supposed to all be all about, anyway. Yeah, I, I could about imagine. I know I don't have any children of my own, as you know, uh, but being a child and uh, getting on hands and knees and cattails for the first time, and then. That first time you actually get to carry, yeah, that's quite the experience out there. So I'm glad that they were able to get the tag and go out there and have some fun. Um, let's dive in here. I know we've got a short window here, and obviously the, the topic on everyone's mind is uh, the leak of a potential draft when it comes to overturning Roe v. Wade. Uh, I am a little bit later on going to be visiting with uh, the audience about protests happening at Justice's Homes, but on the legislative front, that's why I want to ask you. Uh, I know in North Dakota, in your time in the state Senate, uh, your voting record on this, but uh, Senate leader Mitch, or Senate uh, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell did say, yeah, it's possible that a federal ban on abortion could be introduced if uh, Republicans take back control. I know that's on the Senate side, but that would have to come through your chamber as well. If that's present, how do you vote on that, Congressman? Well, one, I, so we've obviously we've had a bunch of conversations about this, and two, just for your listeners, whether they agree with my position or not, I think it's important people know uh, my mom was a Catholic kindergarten teacher. This is uh, something that has been in my life a lot longer than I was ever involved in politics. 
That being said, when you start talking about a lot of these things, and this is something I know about from my other job, criminal justice and these types of issues and things are almost always, I mean, 97% of it is delivered at the state level. And if you believe that the federal government has pretty limited roles in these types of things, then you should be consistent with that. So do I think there's a potential for some, you know, narrowly tailored stuff at the federal level? Absolutely. But I don't care what kind of crime you're prosecuting. The federal government only prosecutes crimes when the state uh, the state doesn't deal with this. And the reason I bring that up is because when you're talking about whether it's a rapist exception or an incest exception or any of those different issues, those fundamentally start with a criminal with a criminal statute, and those criminal statutes are best left to the fifty states. So it's really hard to say what you what a hypothetical bill would look like. But I will do the same thing I always do and see if it's the federal government's role to be involved in that or if that is something that the state should have, which I would actually, and I have made this argument in legislative hearings when I was in the state Senate, which is my fundamental problem with the Roe v. Wade decision. As I got kicked out of my con law class my first year in college for this fight, or law school for this fight too, by the way. So uh, whether or not that this was something that the federal government should have been involving itself in to begin with. So uh, I'm going to ask. I don't know if that was clear or not. No, I'll say I'm going to ask again and hope that you can answer it clear with basically a yes or a no as far as if a federal ban saying, look, federally we are banning the practice of abortion. All 50 states is now banned. Do you vote yes or no on that? Uh, I don't. The, the answer is I don't know. I want to read what the case, what the actual decision says, but I would, I'm, I'm tend, I tend to say this should be left up to Okay. One of the things that's been um, discussed, in a, and I've made comment uh, on these airwaves, uh, is certainly on uh, Republican uh, elected minds is pointing out this leak, saying, well, we got to figure out who did it. They're saying it's obvious that it's one of the liberal court clerks or somewhere along the liberal side that does this. I'm just curious, as far as this leak, you just mentioned you got through law school, you're an attorney. Uh, talk about this, uh, the gravity of what this does for the court in general going forward. Yeah, I think, I mean, listen, I gave a statement on it, and I didn't mention the leak at all. I think uh, sometimes we do this in D.C., and I think it's a bipartisan effort. Uh, we talk about things in 48-hour news cycles. Listen, the uh, repealing Roe v. Wade has been in the Republican platform every single year since uh, Roe v. Wade was decided. And uh, I think the leak is a problem. I think the leak is functionally a problem for a court that, I mean, this is, I mean, there was a leak about masks, right, six months ago, and this is definitely significant, more significant than that. But no, I, I, I won't speculate on it because I've been around this game a long time. And uh, I, if you, if you had me guess, I would guess one way, but I'm not even going to speculate. It's one thing I try not to do. So I hope they investigate it. I hope they can figure out a way to move forward as a court, they have to be able to share things back and forth. It really is unprecedented, and I, I think it's very concerning. Questions coming in for you. But I don't oh. know. I, do, I do not know who did it, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to guess who did it until we see more evidence. And, and I, and I don't – here's – I will say this. I think if, the, if you're – I don't necessarily agree with some of my colleagues saying that there needs to be a DOJ investigation and all of that. If – if, if the court needs more resources to investigate this, they should ask us for it, but they should keep the separation of the branches separate and uh, deal with it. I'm not even sure. It's, I, it's like I, I haven't been able to find with any clarity that it's actually a crime. I think it's terrible. I think it's abhorrent. I think it's bad for the court long term on every decision. But I'm not sure whether or not it's a criminal investigation or something they should be allowed to handle in-house and keep the separation of, of keep the separation of the three branches of government. Sure. Messages are coming in for you, yeah, Congressman. I'm going to get to those. Tyler, can you please ask Congressman Armstrong to name the bills he has uh, a support in the last two years to improve health care, child care, education for living children and living children's in all capitals there. so Sure. I can add, I mean, I can't name, name all of them, at, at, at things, but I do all kinds of stuff on criminal justice reform. The Equal Act, which would send more people out of prison and back home with their families and reunite more more young, even sometimes not as many young adults. I do a ton of stuff on rural addiction, particularly 
with particular fo focuses on uh, rural areas and reservations in general, uh, because they are double, I mean, hit. They deal with a ton of the, the issues every healthcare facility in rural America deals with. And also they deal with the problems that are uniquely associ associated with reservations and not having access to some of the state systems. So we do a ton of things on that. And I mean, I, I don't think this would surprise anybody that knows this about me. These are areas that I try and concentrate on, one, because I think we can get bipartisan support for them, and two, because I think they have more meaningful impact on the ground in a daily, <clears throat> in a daily scenario than just about anything else. Congressman, th this question came in, I, I think it was the the last time I had you on, and I didn't get to it. And, of course, uh, last month we had to punt because, well, weather, and you were trying to get back out to Washington during that blizzard that shut the state down for about two days. Uh, but there was a a bill, I, and I believe the intent, and you probably know better than I, uh, that would cap prices on insulin. And uh, somebody had asked why you voted no or voted against that was – how there, and I'm paraphrasing because it's been a couple of months. Uh, do you remember that bill, and do you remember why you voted no on that? Uh, I didn't vote no. <laughs> I I wasn't there for the vote because oh. I was on my way back home for the state convention. Uh, that's one of the fun things. I wasn't I wasn't here, and just to be clear, I would have voted no if I was here. But it was the day before our state convention, our Republican state convention, and I had to get home, so I actually missed that vote. Okay. Well, since you said you would have voted no anyway, give me the reason. Yeah. Because it doesn't solve the problem. It just it just moves it down the food chain. It doesn't deal with the underlying issues of what the cost is. It just it places more it, it spends exceptionally more money and it places the cost of the impact of that on everybody else who is paying insurance. And it's exactly what we do in D C all the time. And and listen, this happened to be I mean, and it's a messaging bill that doesn't solve any of the structural problems. And in fact, exasperates them. But it looks really, really good in the headline. So uh, let me pivot to ask that this as a follow-up. Is there anything that can be – I mean, prescription prices is on a lot of people's – especially I think our senior citizens, fixed incomes, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. Uh, is there anything that can be done, in your opinion, to, to help kind of bend the increase of cost of prescription medications? Yes. Um, and we deal with it in a unique situation in North Dakota because of our relationship to the Canadian border. And one of the things we have to fix, and I've met with actually the AARP in North Dakota several times on this, on how when you switch, particularly at when you when you turn 65 and you move off of private and on, but that it's, the costs just exceptionally go up. And I would guess, you know, we introduced our version of this bill. The Republicans did last Congress and this Congress. And if we do win back the majority, I would guess that if, for people who don't know, each side saves the first 10 bills. So HR1, HR2, HR3. And I would bet either H one of the first five bills we introduce will be our drug prescription bill. One of the other things that's uh, on people's minds as far as costs going up, Congressman, and I'm just kind of rapid fire here just so I know this short window we have. Yeah. I uh, got home from the cities last night, and something you'd appreciate, I was actually at Target Field uh, doing some Twins uh, stuff. I know you're a big baseball guy, but when I got home last night, three ninety nine uh, at, at the gas pump. This morning when I took a lunch break, four nineteen. So gas is going up. You know, we had the, the release of the strategic – um, you know, uh, barrels there. Uh, what's the deal here? You're involved in oil and gas. You, you're out there watching this. Uh, is there anything, wh what's, what's driving the increase of costs of uh, the price of gasoline right now? Well, I, first of all, it starts with, and listen, this, this is just the way it works. And this is the way the industry works. Uh, when you go from, and this isn't, listen, this was part of COVID and trading and speculating. And you move from trading at negative $26 a barrel at WTI. And granted, that was only for about a day. And then you move up to a max price of where I think it was about 118. When you have those really big swings really quickly, what ends up happening is your cushions go away in the worldwide market. This isn't the U.S. market. This isn't all of those different issues. But you also have a very, very concerted effort through a, a, a whole of government approach where whether it's the uh, SEC, whether it's ESG, whether it's climate, whether it's the, uh, FERC saying they're going to do upstream and downstream uh, climate it, before you can put a pipeline in the ground, 
you have a, you have sent a lot of signals, particularly for onshore and places like that, or like this, where you it's pretty hard to invest in a ten year project for an eighteen month or for an eight month or seven month uh, um, crisis. And I don't think I the people I know in the oil and gas industry simply just don't have confidence at this point. Whether you can talk about Keystone, Dapple. Enbridge line one, line three. You can talk about all the different pipelines, the Williams pipeline going in, Duke and Dominion, who actually never lost the lawsuit and abandoned both their projects in Virginia, trying to get this infrastructure in the ground. I do think there's an opportunity here, and as we continue to move forward, and I think particularly with some of our allies in Europe, who, if anybody remembers, were starting to ban any gas that was produced with hydraulic fracturing in the early 2010s, and figuring out if we can get the tanker infrastructure, the LNG infrastructure, and all of those things in place where we may be able to sell some of our energy to some of our allies, because I think right now they have recognized that relying on Vladimir Putin for their energy needs is not a great place to be. But this is a problem in various different ways through various different administrations that has taken 20 years to <clears throat> encapsulate and to think that we can come out of it immediately is really difficult. And North Dakota is a pretty good example because uh, in 2010, when the oil boom started, you know, you'd had the BP Gulf spill. There were no other shale plays in the country. Uh, oil, oil and gas production essentially in the U.S. was really, really minimal, except in North Dakota. Well, what did that mean? It meant we had ready and easy access to a workforce. And you and I sat in the state legislature and dealt with all of those issues. And there were a lot of strains that came with the oil boom. But when you look at it comparatively to the rest of the world, we were essentially one of three places in the world that wasn't in a recession at that time. Now, even if you have the infrastructure and deal with all of those issues, it's really difficult to find the workforce to, uh, to rack that up. Not to mention, we still, I mean, for as much natural gas and capture infrastructure as we've put in place in North Dakota, we don't want to flare. I think we have learned very well, very well, and took some hard lessons on that. But I mean, nobody wants to waste it. Nobody wants to do that. And without having more and more of that gas capture in place, which takes infrastructure, not just in North Dakota, but across the region, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to ramp up that production as quickly as we as companies would like to. Congressman, I'm getting the, the signal from my producer, and I just got messages from your, <laughs> your folks that you got to get running, and I'm up against the clock here. I tell you what, next time you're back home, come in studio. Let's take questions and have uh, an extended conversation. How's that sound? Absolutely. But if we do that, let's do it a little longer. I mean, I'm yeah. people are sick of talking. They're sick of listening to me talk, but the more questions, we'll, do, we'll try and make it worth it. So. That, that'd be great. I'd appreciate it. Uh, Congressman, I'm going to let you go. I know we're getting pulled away, and All I appreciate right. your time. All right, Congressman Kelly Armstrong, again, up against clock, plus his guys are saying got to go. Well, I'll come back to all your messages right after this here on KFGO.
I've only got about 30 seconds before I got to get you caught up with KFGO News. A lot of messages in to our test club, it's in particular about me asking the question, if there's a federal ban on abortion that comes before you, how do you vote, yes or no, and the duck that happened there? I, all these, I'll get to them. I, I just, I can't right now. I do have one guest line up here after KFGO News, then the whole rest of the way, it's you, me, this microphone, your cell phone. When we come back, though, we got Mr. Benson from the Cass County Engineer. Let's talk about flooding over roads when we come back. News and weather this hour brought to you by Accent Kitchen and Bath, your custom bathroom and kitchen destination. Get started today. Fargo-Moorhead, mostly sunny. It's 68. I'm Paul Jurgens. The Minnesota Senate, on a vote of 37 to 29, passed a bill authorizing certain insurance companies to offer paid family leave benefits. Democrat John Marty from Roseville voted no this afternoon. I think that the people of Minnesota who've been asking for this are going to be deeply disappointed because this does nothing that's going to help them. The bill's author, Senator Julia Coleman of Waconia, says after Governor Walz's pandemic mandate, Minnesota small businesses have had enough. We hear them saying, I don't need another threat of fine. I don't need another mandate. I don't need another tax. What I need is assistance to be able to compete with the large corporations already offering generous paid family leave benefits to their employees. The bill would create a product to provide for family leave insurance and a tax incentive to businesses with fewer than 50 employees to offer paid leave. Bobcat Company plans a new assembly plant near the Twin Cities. The West Fargo-based manufacturer of farm and construction equipment expects the plant in Rogers will be completed by the fourth quarter. Bobcat will hire more than 100 people for the plant, the company's third location in Minnesota. It also has a manufacturing plant in Litchfield where it recently invested in a $26 million expansion in an office in downtown Minneapolis, Bobcat says it will initially concentrate on hiring material handlers, assemblers, and warehouse workers. 68, this is KFGO News. Sixty-eight degrees. This is KFGO News. A fatal crash on Highway 10 near Glendon, Minnesota, last night. It happened around six. 
State Patrol says the 19-year-old man from Fargo who was killed was attempting to cross the westbound lanes of the highway from a rural road when his car was hit on the front driver's side by an SUV that was traveling south, uh, that is west on Highway 10. The driver of the SUV from Ada and two passengers in the SUV were not hurt. The name of the victim has not been released. A deadly crash on Highway 75 south of Halstead, Minnesota, also last night around 7.30. A car was southbound on 75 when the driver lost control in a curve and rolled into the ditch. The 22-year-old Halstead man died at the scene. Again, his name has not been released. Reporter Steve Simpson says despite attempts to stop them, the number of robocalls continues to rise in Minnesota and across the country. According to a spam blocking app, Americans were hit with over 4 billion robocalls last month. That's a 16% jump from the month prior. Attorney General Keith Ellison says in 2019, 51 attorneys general signed a compact with 12 major phone providers in the country. We got the cooperation of industry, but, you know, it is not easy to stop these people. They, they can come from multiple directions, but keep on blocking them and keep on reporting them to us. The director of the South Dakota Division of Criminal Investigations announced a run for the Republican nomination for attorney general. David Natvig's announcement sets up what will be a showdown of at least two candidates at the state convention in June. Natvig, who directs the Division of Criminal Investigation under Attorney General Jason Aronsberg, will face Marty Jackley, a former attorney general, and uh, who began a campaign to unseat Aronsberg as he faced impeachment for his actions surrounding a crash in which he struck and killed a pedestrian. About 70 are high this afternoon. Fargo more and a mostly sunny sky, 50 overnight, partly cloudy tomorrow. A bit warmer, 76, partly sunny. We'll have a chance of showers and thunderstorms. Also Thursday, a good chance of showers and storms, partly sunny, somewhat breezy, and 80. And then Friday, partly sunny, high of 70. 69, Paul Jerkins, News Radio, KFGO. All right, programming and all for y'all. Jason Benson kind of have to uh, push back to 310. So all your messages that were sent in about Congressman Armstrong, uh, we'll get to those right after I visit with my friend, Rusty Alverson. Yes, sir. the KFGO studio. Good to see you. Welcome back. It's good to be back. Yeah. It was a lot of fun yesterday. I would do it all over again, but how, I'm glad to see the sun is shining. How over. are those biceps feeling? You know, it's more the forearms. Okay. And yeah, the shoulders. that makes sense. Yeah. Yep. It was, it was swinging to the bat, I think, that did it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not going to brag on you, but uh, you were telling me off, Mike, that you made contact a little bit there. Uh, there's a video that, if it's not up at KFGO.com, is going to be up. I'm just saying that there's uh, at least one good solid connection from that ball and my bat out to center field. But they didn't sign you. Dog no, gone it. I don't expect a call ever in my life for anything <laughs> athletic anymore. Uh, the peak, that has passed. You <laughs> physically, athletically, she gone. She's behind us. Reminds me of a Toby Keith song. Yeah, ain't as good as I once was, but you can be good once, as I ever was. There you go. Uh, one thing that's good is uh, helping people in need. Absolutely, that's Absolutely. what's going on here. Well, the representatives of the National Association of Letter Carriers and local hunger relief organizations gearing up the 30th annual NALC Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive. Now, individuals are being asked to leave food items by their mailboxes this Saturday to be picked up by their letter carriers. We talked with Jared Slindy of the Great Plains Food Bank. He says it's great to be back in person. They've kind of had this virtual the last couple of years because of the pandemic, but they're back in person this year. And Jared says non-perishable food items are the best. Now, the Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive, the biggest single-day food drive in the nation, Tyler. Again, going on 30 years since 1993, 1.82 billion pounds of food wow. nationwide has been collected under that program. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And the need for food is great, too, because uh, reading a report from CoBank earlier today, a new report saying that as retail meat prices continue to climb, consumers likely to shift away from pricier items like beef more to poultry 
There's been a 15% across-the-board increase in retail meat prices reported by USDA in March for the first, uh, first quarter of this year. For beef, that increase adds up to about $1 or more per pound for the consumer. For chicken, about 30 cents more per pound. And you talk about gas prices, you talk about everything, Mm -hmm. and these dollars and these cents. They add up. They do. They add up. And not in a a healthy way for a budget uh, for a family either. Correct. That's unfortunate. So, again, uh, stamp out hunger. Food drive this Saturday. Buy your mailbox. Your letter carrier will pick up those non-perishable items, or you can donate any time throughout the year. Great Plains Food Bank or many other organizations throughout the region. Yeah, yeah. very good. Uh, we'll see what, how how much we collect on Saturday. So do your part out there, boys and girls. Rusty, I appreciate it. You come back next hour. Absolutely. You can go to kfjo.com, click on that agriculture tab to learn more of his work and Sarah Heinrich as well. CBS National News on the way. Then I'm coming back to all your messages. Uh, about our conversation with Congressman Armstrong right after this on KFGO. Zero. That's the I Consultants of North Dakota Text Club, and that's where a lot of you choose to interact with the show. And I appreciate all of y'all that are sending in your thoughts or questions. And I tried to, uh, and I think I got to all of them, that, the questions that is that were sent in, but uh, a lot of your comments coming in. All right, with uh, like 
questions and conversation with Congressman Kelly Armstrong. And I'm, I just appreciate the fact that he does come on. I think he can tell that him and I get along, even though we do not agree, politically speaking, on a variety of issues. Uh, and I'd ask because you've got, uh, you know, the leader of the Senate on the Republican side and Mitch McConnell saying earlier this week, if not at the end of last week, that if they get control of Congress, meaning the Republicans, uh, that they would likely uh, see or perhaps see it's an option uh, that there would be a federal ban on abortion if this decision comes down uh, from the Supreme Court as drafted. So I thought it was appropriate to ask if, in fact, you are in Congress next session, you have the majority, how do you vote on it? The first one was pretty convoluted response, and that's certainly what I think a lot of people took issue with here. Tyler, very political answer. Tyler is just like Hoven. What did he say? Well, I, that's where I got the follow-up, but I don't know that I got an answer. We'll have to see. This is a question. I know that has not sat well with you. <laughs> and that's very apparent uh, from the messages I'm reading. Uh, that's the answer he provided. Uh, Tyler, the Republican uh, pearl clutching about the leak is obviously a distraction from the fact that they've been found out as far as their goals. Since more than two-thirds of American adults agree with the current law, it's obviously something Republicans feel they want to impose their minority view on everyone else once again. Well, that's where uh, and Congressman Armstrong's response saying on the Republican side, overturning Roe v. Wade has been in their platform year after year after year, dating all the way back to, what, 30 years, somewhere in there. Uh, this has been a goal of theirs. And this is why when we talk about it, I always allude to the dog catching the car, just on the pure uh, political side of this. Now, outcomes and the desired outcome from some people, I think that's different. You know, you've got people that have... This has been their purpose is to, to, to accomplish the overturn of this, uh, this ruling. There are other people involved in politics that have been using your passion for that just to raise money and to win elections based off that. And some of that and most of that has been on the Republican Party side. Uh, and if this is accomplished... Uh, the pure partisanship on this issue as far as who's raising money based on it, that might dry up. That well might all of a sudden become dry. You caught the car, now what? What's the next thing that you're going to use to raise all that money to help you get elected? Because the whole NRA, that thing, that had some issues as well over the last couple of years, as you are probably well aware. So that was the other. You had guns and you had this issue. So I don't know what the next one will be. And I think on just the, again, the, the partisan side of trying to win elections based on issues, what can you stir up money from? If this one's gone on the Republican side, I think that's why you're hearing some people out there wringing their hands over this, just because of the pure electoral success based on this issue. Um, other messages that have uh, were sent in. Tyler, yes, we could have socialized medicine. Sounds like a terrible idea. Uh, we can also stop developing new medicines and researching, too. There was a cost to develop and researching these new medicines. No one complained when we developed the COVID vaccine, did they? Yeah, some did. <laughs> so, some did complain about it. There's, there, some of them refused to take uh, the shot because of how quickly it was done. Um, I was not one of those. I thought it was uh, a great advance in, uh, in medicine, right? And I, I think I've said in this microphone – had the last administration took ownership of it uh, yeah, and said, look, well, we, were able, we were able to cut this and that as far as all these barriers that could have been to get this done in a more timely fashion. They didn't take that approach. I don't know if that snowballed on them. I know that there's politics involved in uh, the development of it. They, and who would have taken credit at that time? I think people are quick to point out in this text club uh, that Kamala Harris was asked a question and uh, the way she responded, I think, in the uh, – the vice presidential debate set people back saying, well, if it was a developed in this administration, and I'm paraphrasing now that you would think twice, unless of course it was approved by those medical providers, but approved by uh, the very regulatory bodies that it has been approved by. Uh, but the, the cost of it, of developing these new things, I understand. But when you are somebody that needs that life saving medicine, for example, insulin, I think there could be measures taken. Yeah, I mean, there should be absolutely no reason that on the Canadian side of this border that most of you listening to me on right now uh, call home, 
that up in Canada, you can get your insulin far less than what you have to get it for here in America. We shouldn't have to be hearing about caravans, not at the southern border, but from Minnesota going to Canada to just try to find insulin that's affordable for a child that needs it. I, mean, I guess if that's socialized medicine, then so be it. Yeah, something needs to be done, in my opinion. More messages that were sent in. Uh, Tyler, so are you going Are you going to be willing to raise taxes to help support all these babies that their moms can't afford to feed, shelter, provide health, and schooling slash college? I think we should uh, take all erectile dysfunction drugs away from men. I wish men had cramps and had uh, to have at least one baby before you take the option away from women and girls. I'm so angry, disgusted, and disappointed with all you Republicans. This is 2022 not 1922. You know, that we have not done enough, I think, spotlighting the other part of this equation of how pregnancies happen on the man's side, the male side of this. Last time I did, I, I, I just in passing, you know, talked about the, with the blue pill, you know, outlaw that or have something, have something done uh, that makes that a little bit more rigorous to get because that is, in times, part of this equation. That goes into how, in fact, this child comes to be. Uh, there, there's been no traction on that side of it. Yeah, because there are ways to prevent this as an option, besides just completely outlawing the practice. Uh, you have birth control, for example. But there's also that uh, you know undercurrent that says, well, we ought not provide that or have that easily accessible or affordable either. And the thing that troubles the hell out of me on that side of it, especially when it comes to, say, the pill. I mean, there are women out there that aren't just using that to avoid getting pregnant. There are medical benefits for some of this. Some people rely on that for other means that they have. Uh, as far as whether it's not just acne, not the, the, not the, the, the outward superficial uh, benefits of it, but quite frankly, there are other benefits that some people need that pill and access to it to make them healthier. I know that I hate the arguments of slippery slopes, but quite frankly, this is one based on the way that that draft opinion came out. And it, I think it is worthy of those that are asking, well, what's next? If in fact this goes, if it's based on the privacy clause here, then what could be next in line with this makeup of the court that's quite frankly set in the way it is right now as far as the makeup for quite some time. 35270, that is the I can some North Dakota Text Club. I will come back to the more messages that are coming in, but I gotta get you this weather update from Too Tall Tom Shemansky. He's gonna tell you a little bit about the rain coming up at the top of the hour. We'll talk about what that means for your roads and fields here in Cass County. So much more coming in. I'll get to all that next right here on KFGO.
primarily to the health care thing. That's why I think back to the, the whole debate on Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, there were uh, the tensions there. I could never wrap my mind around uh, the way of which this particular issue of uh, you know people being able to afford things that they need for their very livelihood and well, how it got so contentious at that time and how we had such a different worldview of what someone's right to health care is. Now, I think some of that maybe, I mean, the whole notion, we talk about things that Republicans have run on consistently for the last the latter part of a decade or more. Yeah, sure, we can talk about overturning Roe v. Wade. Overturning Obamacare was right there with it. I think they moved on from that after John McCain said, no, not on my watch, put his thumb down. Now, did that resolve everything? Hell no. There's still things that, with the affordable aspect, for those in that middle slot, those that uh, make too much to qualify for the same programs I'm talking about here, but you don't make quite enough to be self-sufficient, that whole gap there, I still think there's a lot of work left to be done. But I think we've come a long ways in what we expect to have for just an average Joe or Jane out there compared to what we did before the passage of that law. Get you caught up with CBS National News. We'll check in with Paul Jurgens. Let's talk about the road conditions here locally. There's a large amount of water on roadways yesterday. Probably going to happen again. Jason Benson, he's a Cass County engineer. He'll tell you what to be watching for later on this week. I'm Tyler Axis, and this is KFGO Fargo.
back in 1994, before Weezer became nothing but a karaoke cover band, they debuted the Blue Album. That was released on this date in 94. Buddy Holly, think about some of the bangers they had on here. My name is Jonas, Undone the Sweater Song, Say It Ain't So. Buddy Holly, it just, it was, that was good. Back when Weezer was somebody Besides just the cover band, that sounds more like a karaoke. Also on this date, New Kids on the Block single Step by Step was released. You're welcome that we went with Weezer instead of New Kids on the Block Step by Step. Twister hit theaters as well. And that's, you're all New Kids on the Block. Was New Kids on the Block the first boy band? It was it? I'm going to say yes, it was. Because then, you know, of course, that led the way for oh, Boys to Men, In <laughs> Sync, Backstreet Boys. We can give them the, the tip of the cap for that, being the first boy band out there, New Kids on the Block, but also Weezer, Twister on this date as well. Plus, there's a couple of other things, but I'll save that for later on because I've got to get you caught up with Paul Jurgens at the KFGO News Center. KFGO News, it is mostly sunny and 69. Bobcat Company is planning to build a new skid steer loader assembly plant at Rogers, northwest of Minneapolis. Bobcat says the plant's going to mean an additional 225,000 square feet in production capacity and enable the company to streamline efficiencies in the Midwest. The company plans to fill more than 100 new full-time positions at the plant this year. Bobcat anticipates the plant on 22 acres will be completed later this year. Bobcat already has manufacturing plants in Litchfield, Minnesota, Statesville, North Carolina, Bismarck, and Gwinter, North Dakota. Don Haney, News Radio, KFGO. Bobcat's corporate offices are in West Fargo. A reward has been offered through Minnesota Crime Stoppers to find the person responsible for a fire at a Rochester church that cost $2.5 million in damages. The fire at Peace United Church of Christ broke out in the early morning hours of April 18th. No one was inside the church at the time. Had the church not had the proper alarm system, the building would have sustained even more damage. The church was able to resume services, but only in specific rooms. Heavy rain has revealed a problem. The Grand Forks County Courthouse, the historic dome leaks. County Administrator Tom Ford says several holes have been discovered at the dome, large enough for sunlight to come through. He says during a recent rain event, over 80 gallons of water had to be removed. The third floor was also affected. The county is contacting roofing company to see about a potential fix. Senators Amy Klobuchar and Tina Smith are among those behind a bipartisan push for more money to address the bird flu outbreak. The Minnesota Democrats have signed a letter pointing out that highly pathogenic avian influenza has been te- detected in 32 states and killed more than 36 million birds. The letter to the Senate Appropriations Committee says the outbreak has serious implications on poultry producers, small towns, and the egg economy. Fargo more heading about 74 are high this afternoon. A mostly sunny sky, 50 overnight, partly cloudy. Rain chances tomorrow, showers, thunderstorms, partly sunny otherwise in 76. And then more rain expected Thursday, partly sunny, a good chance of showers and thunderstorms, 80. 69, Paul Jorgens, News Radio, KFGO. Now on the crossover between the 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock hour, I talked about boy bands because of New Kids on the Block, and I said they were the first boy band. Uh, some people take an issue with that, also uh, at my taste in music. I'll get back to all those. Uh, but one thing that we saw yet again yesterday was how quickly the water overland could rise with the torrential downpours uh, that we're getting. Unfortunately, this wet cycle, as we heard from the National Weather Service, Looks to be hanging around at least to the end of this month. And if you've been anywhere outside of city limits, well, certainly yesterday inside of town, but if you take some of these county roads, there's those rural pockets out there, there's a lot of water. What does that mean if we continue in this wet cycle? Here to tell us about that is Jason Benson. He's a Cass County engineer who's been driving all over those roads watching this water. Jason, I appreciate your flexibility, my friend. How are you? Great. How are you doing? Doing well. Sun shining today. I'll take any chance we can get to see that thing out 
uh, in between these uh, rain events that have just been so significant over the last couple of weekends. Yes, yeah, it's nice to have the sun out and a, and a little breeze to get things dried out. But, yeah, we've definitely got more rain than, than we need, I think, in the, you know, the last five, five and a half weeks since the 1st of April, we've had uh, over seven inches of rain. And so it's really piled up a lot of a lot of water out in the rural parts of Cass County. Yeah, it's uh, th- it wasn't this past weekend. It must have been, well, every weekend we've had an event that's had a, a rain accompanying us. So I, I don't remember if it was two weeks ago or what, but I drove north of town. I'm in the Harwood area, and there's a lot of standing water out there. And I noticed over lunch today that uh, some of the signs, well, they're getting out there just in case as far as road closures. And I know that you've been talking about maybe this being necessary because there's water here already. We're expecting more of it. Do you have some trouble areas in mind that you want to give uh, the listeners a heads up as to, you know what, we might have to close this down for a day or two? Yeah, right now the the biggest area where we're having some issues is immediately west of West Fargo and Forest all the way down to, to Kindred. So the kind of the corridor uh, right along the Cheyenne River, especially – uh, to the west of, of the Cheyenne River. The, the Cheyenne kind of it breaks out a little bit north of Kindred, and it just doesn't seem to be able to get back into the river. So it, it just keeps leapfrogging the, that water north. It you know, overtops. You know, so we've had our County Road 14, which is immediately west of, kind of southwest of Forest, uh, also known as 100th Avenue. We've got some water going over that gravel road uh, west of the Cheyenne River. Then as you get further north, 52nd Avenue, 40th Avenue, 32nd Avenue, all west of the Cheyenne Diversion um, have water going over them. So, you know, for those rural uh, residents that live out uh, towards Kindred and uh, and are using different routes to get into the uh, the metro area, you know, definitely have to pick some different, different routes because a lot of those roads have, you know, while not significant stretches of water over them um you know there's enough that we've got the roads closed and we don't want people driving through it and i'm going to pull in another part of the state that's had some of this as well i'm originally from the devil's lake area and it was just yesterday that they announced highway 20 uh webster and south and that's in between uh, devil's lake and there after a, a quite a few days of you know they they had the cones up so people could still drive through the yes there's water over the the, the roadways, but they decided, no, look, enough's enough. we got to close this down. At what point is it the decision made that we're closing it? And, and you know what? you got to find an alternate route, Jason. Yeah, with our gravel roads, generally, once water's going over it, yeah. we'll close it down because it just, you know, you, you don't know. Um, there's no stripe that you can see uh, to give you, a, you know, a clear guide. And, you know, if there's a culvert, the culvert could easily wash out. And it, that water is murky, and you just don't know uh, what what's underneath the water surface. Um, on some of our paved roads, we will, if there's just a little bit of water going over that, uh, we'll close them for general through traffic. But uh, but for the local residents, that that is their only route in and out of their home. We'll we'll leave those open as long as the uh, the water's not unmanageable. But that's something that we kind of assess on a day-by-day basis. Right now, we don't have water over any of our paved roads. It's just gravel roads. So in, in those areas, we just have it closed. Um, is, is there a way to f- enforce the, the through traffic versus those that are just going home? I, I, I've seen those signs before, and that's always the question. Well, is anyone watching this? Because I think of that stretch that's north of West Fargo, that county road that wraps up through Harwood there. That sign was out the uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And I was just wondering, is it, Hey, yes. just be mindful of this or is it though? Absolutely. don't go unless you live up here. Well, um, in, in that, you know, that County road 17 corridor up through County road 20, uh, you know, from West Fargo to, to Harwood. Um, uh, you know, if we start to see significant traffic and especially when, you know, if there's a semi truck that's going through it, we know that that person most likely is not taking their semi truck fully loaded to their house. Um, so, you know, in that case, then I'm working closely with our sheriff's department and Jesse Johnner. And, and so uh, just in a lot of times, just having them posted out there uh, keeps, you know, those folks from, 
from driving through it. And, and, you know, I do understand sometimes, uh, you know, people get out and there isn't a really good spot to turn around. If, if there's water on both sides of the road, um, it's tough to find a spot to, to back up and turn around a large vehicle or a trailer. Uh, but that's why we have those signs that the average through vehicle that's, that's trying to make their way, you know, from West Fargo up to Harwood to jump on I-29 and keep going north, um, you know, to find an alternate route instead of taking County Road 17. And and with that, you know, we, right now the gauge is, has bumped up. Um, yesterday they were they were they were saying that the expectation was later tonight into tomorrow that it could reach as high as 90.9 on the Harwood gauge. At, um, that, since then they've they've uh, reduced that a little bit to 90.5 almost a half a foot less and they've kind of stretched that out into more Thursday time frame so we'll see we've got our fingers crossed that maybe it won't get quite even to 90 or maybe just a little over 90 and that that's the difference between those paved roads going underwater and uh and or just having the water get up to the shoulder and not being uh an issue on our transportation network and and of course that also helps from a damage standpoint because once water starts rushing over you know, it starts washing out the shoulder and um, causes more damage. And again, we're we're lucky, like you mentioned, up you know in the Devil's Lake area. But you know, I know all the way up the the Red River corridor from here to Pembina, uh, Cass County hasn't had nearly the damage as Trail and Grand Forks counties with you know a lot more significant damage and to, to roads and bridges. So uh, while we're dealing with it, we know our uh, our fellow uh, Red River Valley residents are, are dealing with a lot more to the north. Yeah, I think that's a fair way to close out. Yeah, that you're right. We we're noticing it here, and maybe it's because I drive through it daily here. But yeah, there's other parts of the state, and I do want to get this out because uh, this person is right. That Highway 20 up by Webster only closed from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. So I do want to get that clarification out there. So they are open as of now, uh, ladies and gentlemen. If you're listening to me up in that area. Uh, thanks for that text that came in. Uh, Jason, if anything changes over the next couple of days or, hell, the next couple of months, years, as long as I'm in this chair, this platform is always available to you. Is there anything you want to get out before I let you go? Well, I think the the, the big message is, you know, because we do have some thunderstorms that are, you know, scheduled to roll through here in the next uh, 24 to 36 hours. So, you know, places that if the water drops down off that road and you think, hey, tomorrow morning I should be able to take the road in, just be mindful that conditions can change uh, fairly quickly. So, you know, for those rural residents that that have experienced either this spring or in past floods, uh, access problems where road gets uh, overtopped or they get cut off, just be prepared for that over the next uh, three to four days here. Very good. Great reminder, Jason. I appreciate your time and your flexibility. I'm sure we'll be chatting again soon, all right? All right. You have a great afternoon. Yeah, you do the same. Jason Benson, he is the Cass County engineer out there just saying you know and he's right and i think uh, we were all reminded of that yesterday and it didn't matter if you're a rural resident or you're within the metro area with how much rain came down i wasn't here but it didn't take long to see all those videos whether it's from our very own jj gordon or others that were out there city streets flooded you saw that on 32nd you saw it right outside the kfgo building here that people are driving through those so it can change quickly and one thing you should not do is change the dial on your radio when that does happen. You keep it locked into 790 AM, 94.1 or 104.7 FM KFGO because we will keep you up on all the latest weather, roads, all of that right here. I'm Tyler Axis. This is Afternoon's Live. We're going to keep rolling on your messages. And I'll, I'll address the whole boy bands and my taste in music as far as the nomenclature, which great drop in that text club, about what a banger is. We'll talk about that when we come back. Here on a Tuesday afternoon, KFGO time is 3.19. Don't go anywhere.
Now I've gotten down a rabbit hole of new kids on the block. And there's a reason why, and I can justify it. So if anybody comes in here and wonders why in the world on the Google images, new kids on the block is here during the afternoon is live, it's because on this date, their single Step by Step was released in 1990. Um, and I had said, well, they had to be the first boy band, right? In the capacity of which we know boy bands. Well, they're not playing instruments. They're entertaining in a fashion sense that they are up there singing, dancing, and performing. Somebody throws this one out there. Tyler KFG, the, the boy band Jackson 5 and the Osmond Brothers. I could maybe go in on the, the Jackson 5, but I'll throw it out to other listeners. This is, who in your mind is the first boy band in America? Jackson Five, maybe, but were they in the sense of you know the Insincs and Backstreet Boys? Because that's the it's unfortunate, but that's the boy band era of which I grew up. My producer Eric Johnson grew up. A lot of well, not maybe not a lot of people in this building, but a handful of people in this building. It was, and I think it was it went Backstreet Boys then Insync, right? Was that the timeline of which they came out as Backstreet Boys? Then in sync. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely the timeline. I'm trying to think of what the the first the, the first Backstreet Boys song because I'm sure it was Total Request Live and Carson Daly talked for way too long and then he got a glimmer of what this Backstreet Boys song was and then it just played over and over and over again for like the next ten years and every song they 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 came out with was a number one hit. Yeah, was everybody their first song? Every. Everybody, uh, uh, that uh, that song doesn't even sound familiar. Tyler, oh. New Kids on the Block were way earlier. That's what I'm saying. New Kids on the Block were the first boy band, is what I'm trying to say. Back in the, the like late '80s, early '90s, you had Marky Mark. You had uh, I don't even know anybody besides Marky Mark here. Uh, since I'm already on the rabbit hole, I could go New Kids on the Block members and go to all instead of images. And why I was looking up uh, images, I have no idea. But you had Donnie Wahlberg. You had Mark Wahlberg. Is Donnie, Donnie still acting? Well, no, Mark, Mark Wahlberg is. So Mark Wahlberg, not in Backstreet Boys. Donnie was. Mark wasn't. What? Wasn't Did in, you say Backstreet wasn't, Boys? Wasn't in New Kids, I'm sorry. Oh, well, I got, mem- I got members pulled up right now. New Kids on the Block was members. Mark, was Marky Mark? It says Mark of- Wahlberg, wow. vocals. I well, of course, know. they're all vocals because they didn't play any instruments. <laughs> Donnie Wahlberg, vocals. Jonathan Knight, you guessed it, vocals. Joey something, McIntyre. I don't know. Mac, I think it's pronounced McIntyre. I'm not. Well, that's positive I was close. That. Give me an uh, A for effort there. Jordan Knight, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Danny Wood. Those are your new kids on the block that aren't so do anymore. Age a little bit, yeah. So my argument was they were the first. Somebody says Beach Boys. Yeah, uh, I don't. I mean, uh, now uh, we're splitting hairs on what. Uh, I did do a little uh, research on this after the question popped up. Yeah, and but th- this is based on the internet. Yeah, Menudo. Was is often cited as the Menudo. F- what is that? So they were a Puerto Rican boy band, and well, I the believe name that gave Ricky, away they I, weren't American. I believe that Ricky Martin was affiliated associated with it somehow, and yeah. I'm not exactly sure. Ricky Martin, <sighs> huh? Living La Vida Loca. That wasn't his first thing. He was part of a boy band. <laughs> I had no idea. Well, now you know as yes, well. He was a past member of Menudo. So okay. th- th- that that one often gets cited in. I mean, there's the. You know, bands that were teen heartthrob type bands. Correct, because you could you, know, you threw out the monkeys. Yeah, I mean, yeah. people could might as well just throw out the Beatles then and all that. Everly Brothers comes in right <laughs> now as well. No, we're talking the the sense of which uh, somebody Marky Mark was not in New Kids on the Block. Well, then why did the internet tell me <laughs> that he did? He was. Everything you see on the internet has a hint of truth, right? We'll find out at the 4 o'clock fact checker. In fact, when we come back, somebody's saying the Beatles, question mark, not in the sense of the boy bands of which I think comes to all of our mind. We'll get you caught up KF Joe News. We can continue this conversation. I do want to talk about protests outside of Supreme Court Justice Holmes. Is that fair or not? I'll get your take on that next.
9 degrees. I'm Paul Jerkins. Bail has been set at $1.5 billion for a Red Wing, Minnesota woman charged with leading her newborn son to die beside a lake nearly 20 years ago. Investigators say Jennifer Matter also abandoned another infant in the Mississippi River years earlier. Matter appeared in court on second-degree murder charges in the 2003 death of the boy whose body was found on the shore of Lake Pepin. The Goodyear County Sheriff says DNA evidence proves that along with the death of the boy, Matter is responsible for the death of a baby girl found in the Mississippi River in 1999. Charges have not been filed in that case. The Minnesota State Patrol says all 613 state troopers and 92 non-sworn employees are now equipped with body-worn cameras. The project also included installation of 644 new squad car video systems. Colonel Matt Langer says they capture the actions of troopers and the driver. Well, this was an important step forward in technology for a number of reasons, but it was also embraced by the State Patrol. It's a good thing. It's a good thing for the public, and to have that level of transparency now available is something that we're happy to report. Langer says the State Patrol hired a support staff to run the program. Troopers have already captured more than 281,000 pieces of video since the rollout took place in December. 69, this is KFGO News. Sunny 69 degrees. This is KFGO News. Bobcat Company plans a new assembly plant near the Twin Cities. The West Fargo-based manufacturer of farm and construction equipment expects the plant in Rogers will be completed by the fourth quarter. Bobcat will hire more than 100 people for the plant, the company's third location in Minnesota. It also has a manufacturing plant in Litchfield, where it recently invested in a $26 million expansion and an office in downtown Minneapolis. Bobcat says it will initially concentrate on hiring material handlers, assemblers, and warehouse workers. Senate Democrats are pushing for a vote this week in Washington to pass federal legislation that would guarantee the right to an abortion. That's after last week's leak of a Supreme Court draft that seemed to indicate an intent to overturn Roe v. Wade. U.S. Senator Tina Smith says she supports the proposal, but adds... We understand in the Senate, uh, because uh, this is something that the vast majority of Republicans don't support, we don't have the vote to provide this protection for people in the Senate. And that's why this upcoming election around the country is so vitally important. The number of licenses for this year's deer hunt in North Dakota has been reduced because of an outbreak of a viral disease last year. Game and Fish is making 64,200 licenses available down 8,000 from last year. The drought last year created perfect breeding areas for biting gnats that transmit the disease. It affects white-tailed deer more than mule deer. The disease has impacted the success of hunters. For the past couple of years, during last November's gun season, overall success fell sharply from 68% in 2020 to 57% last year. A large black bear has been caught on home security in the Minneapolis suburb of St. Louis Park. The bear wandered through a backyard. Police and the DNR were notified. The homeowner says they advised people in the neighborhood to put garbage cans in the garage and to remove bird feeders. Others living nearby have reported broken bird feeder poles. There have been several bear sightings in the Twin Cities the past several months, mostly in the northern suburbs. Fargo, Moorhead, near 70 for that high this afternoon. A mostly sunny sky, 50, partly cloudy. Overnight then, tomorrow, 76, partly sunny, chances of showers and thunderstorms. It is sunny, and again, 69. Paul Jerkins, News Radio, KFGO. Rusty Halverson joins me yet again. Yes, sir. Boy, bands. I said that uh, New Kids on the Block, which let me set this record straight because somebody said Marky Mark was not in New Kids on the Block. Now, with full acknowledgement that if I were to have this as a source on my midterm, 
In college, my professor said, I'm throwing it out if you use Wikipedia as a source, but allow me as a talk show host to refer to Wikipedia That's fair. and the history of New Kids on the Block. That's fair. Uh, 15-year-old Donnie Wahlberg impressed so-and-so with his rapping skills, becoming the group's first member of New Kids on the Block. He was initially joined by his younger brother, Mark. Marky Mark. Marky Mark. Okay. Who left the group after only a few months. But we don't need oh, to really? But he was. So he was a part of New oh. Kids on the Block. You just never knew about that. And now oh. you all do. Huh. Huh. Your I, first boy band. You have to say it started here. Oh, the first boy band. Um, I would have to go back to Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. Um, 1985, a group known as the Highwaymen. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. <laughs> This, I mean, I, I love your enthusiasm because the highway been great. <laughs> when you think boy band, Johnny you think Cash, about you think Chris about people Christian that aren't Anderson. playing. I understand. I know the if highway. If you called are, any one uh, of those gentlemen boy boys, bands, yeah. what would yeah. happen? Especially if they get the whiskey involved, they're going to be a brawl out in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Unless Willie's around, then he's going to pass this and try to calm well, everybody well, down. Yeah, Willie's the pacifist. But yeah, he, he still wouldn't hey, like man, to call just, All right, everybody, calm down. So. Take a hit of this. They are not the blueprint for the ultimate boy band. No, the, the, a man the boy, band. The, yeah, they're, they're the gentleman band. Um, the high no, women. The, the, you do not play instruments in boy bands. You ah. just sing and dance. And you, uh, you entertain. Well, you know, Millie Vanilli, they were very talented. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess singing I could be loosely... <laughs> Lip singing? Okay, that might work. Either way, I know you got important stuff to get to here when it comes to weather. I'll pick other people's brains on boy bands <laughs> later on. The uh, Highway Men, which I did listen to on my way home last night, so thanks yeah, for bringing that up. There you go. There you go. Well, uh, on your way home, you probably saw a lot of wet fields. Uh, you probably saw uh, some ponding in fields, some ponding in the ditches and whatnot. The closer I got here, absolutely. Yeah, and so a lot of producers are waiting. We are in a waiting mode. Hurry up and wait for a lot of producers, especially when it comes to sugar beets. And we visited yesterday with Harrison Weber of the Red River Valley Sugar Beet Growers Association. And he says that producers have been here before. They just need a couple of good windows to plant. There you go. There's Harrison right there. He's an optimist. I like yep. that about him. Yep, you got to be. I hope my buddy back home that farms was listening. <laughs> <laughs> Stop wearing your concrete down by walking circles, Ben. <laughs> I mean, it, it, he's, you're right. There, the, you're, there's nothing a guy can do. Yep. All he can do is just hope for those windows to appear, and hopefully it happens soon. I know this week, probably out of the equation, but perhaps yep. the week after. But if those windows open up, as Jack Michaels would say, Katie, bar the door. They yeah. will be going. Oh, yeah. Nonstop. Yep. Get it done. That's what they'll be doing. Yep. Rusty, I appreciate you getting it done for me here and giving me an update on uh, you know what some of these people are thinking out there. And, you bet. And all they have to do right now is time to think about how what they want to be out doing. So. Yeah, think about your boy bands. <laughs> well, we'll take care of that here. Okay. After CBS National News, also on a more serious note, I do want to ask you whether or not – you think it's appropriate or it's okay or understandable that you have protests not just happening at the Supreme Court itself, in which they've now uh, erected barricades, big fencing, just like they had at the Capitol on January 6th. They are doing that, or following January 6th, they have that at the Capitol now. Uh, but those protests are now being held at the personal residence of the justices. Do you think that's appropriate or not? I'd love to hear from you at 35270. We'll come back with that conversation and much more right after this on KFGO.
um, uh, the other justices. You know, you got Gorsuch, Clarence Thomas, Amy Coney Barrett. And uh, actually, now that I just posed uh, that before CBS, I was scrolling through a couple of things here, aside from the boy bands, because you've sent a number of those in. I had to do the Google to figure out who you're talking about. But uh, I did see Lindsey Graham. I just issued in the last three minutes a letter to the Attorney General Merrick Garland pressing him to protect Supreme Court justices from threats of violence and protests taking place outside of their residences. Um, you know, I think about this and how far people ha- are taking this, but I also think back to this not being the first instance of this when it comes to the when it comes to private residence of, uh, of elected officials. And I think about the kids that might be in those homes or the family members that you know what they I get it that your family comes along with you when you are running for office. Now the courts, that's a whole different thing. You don't put your name on a ballot, you get appointed, so on and so forth. You know the difference between them. Uh, but how impactful and not a good way that could be for that young adult or that child inside the home. And I think about the fact that these types of antics have been used before. And I think it was not very long ago For example, there was people outside of Governor Wall's residence because of his actions and what he did through executive orders when it comes to combating COVID. It wasn't very long ago that you had people outside of school board members' homes protesting them on their private property because of what they were doing or not doing when it comes to COVID mitigation in the classroom or in the hallways. Now, I get free speech. People say, well, they've got a right to be doing this. If they're out on the streets, if they're not on, if they're not trespassing, it's well within their right. Are you comfortable with it is a question that I've got for you. Because I'm all fine with people putting up the, the signs, you know, writing whatever remarks they have, starting whatever chant, and trying to make their opinion and their emotions known. But there are limitations, are there not? I'm just wondering if, in fact, this were an opportunity that you could partake in, would you? Would you go to Justice Alito's house and protest outside because of this opinion that I understand the impacts a lot of people are saying this will have? And I understand the emotion behind this. I do. But this, is it a bridge too far for you? Or are you saying, you know what, I'm joining them on that pickle line. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make my sign. I don't care if it's their house because of what they're doing to my privacy on my property. 35270, that's where you can provide your response there. Tyler, while I don't approve of the Supreme Court Justice Holmes' protests, I find the Republican indignation hollow. Republicans as a group have attempted to thwart the January 6th investigation and continue as a group to support the leader of the insurrection. Donald J. Trump comes in. My Trump supporters deserve no accommodation for anything, and that includes, in particular, the three justices who lied during their confirmation hearings. Another one, Tyler, if I was a neighbor, that's all I would say. It wouldn't be good for the protesters. I don't have to listen to it. It's uh, my free speech to where I live. I think there's a lot of people that that this is that, that step too far. In fact, even the the person saying, I don't approve of the Supreme Court justice, then went on to say, but look at what they've done and with their public and their official capacity and some of the damages that would do. I don't think anything illegal is being done. I mean, if unless, of course, they trespass, right? I mean, if, they, if they're approaching the house or if they're on the lawn, you know, they'll get off my lawn, ain't, lawn ain't going to be enough. There might be a time where you need security to intervene, but I don't know that I've heard any reports about that. And... As I'm sitting here discussing this with you and wrapping my mind around where you draw limitations, maybe not legally, just ethically and morally and on what you're willing to do for your, with yourself and with your actions in these moments in high emotion. I think back on this very issue, nonetheless, if I, if I'm remembering uh, legislative moments here in North Dakota and it was uh, Margaret city was the lawmaker. She's a state senator out in North Dakota. This was one of her prime things, was, uh, you know, combating Roe v. Wade, abortion. But it was also about LGBTQ. It was 
you know the type of people that Margaret City was. What she did, at least in the public office that she held. And I remember the unease and people denouncing this on both sides of the aisle, out in Bismarck, when people went to her home and protesting this, protesting her actions in uh, in the legislature. So this isn't something that's new. It happened right here in North Dakota. For me at that time, that was that was a step too far. I think it is now as well. Am I alone in that? I'll come back to your messages. I got to get you this update from Too Tall Tom Schmansky. I'll get you the weather update. We'll wrap up the second hour of Afternoons with all these messages that have come in. I'm Tyler Axis. You got to locked into KFGO Fargo.
there have been about a handful of text messages that all point to the same thing here. So I'm just going to read one of them and know that uh, I'm covering this uh, for all the other ones that were pointing this out. Tyler, the Supreme Court ruled that protesting abortion doctors' homes was covered by the First Amendment. So enjoy justices. Basically saying if you're going to say that this is covered and protected for doctors, then why are they now shouting that it's happening to them when the protests come not exactly knocking on their door, but certainly outside underneath their street light where they call home. I think that's an interesting addition to this conversation because if you're going to have those out there like Lindsey Graham saying they need additional protection because of this, when in fact they had a ruling that said this is completely legal, then I guess here we find ourselves. Doesn't answer exactly my question for you personally, would you partake in it, or is this an activity that you'd say, no, that one's, I might stand on the steps of the Supreme Court itself or at any legislative capital steps, but I'm not going to someone's home. We'll continue because there's other messages in. I'll get to all that in the final hour of Afternoon's Live that kicks off next here on KFGO.
Show time is 4.05. It's time for a fact checker at 4. These are things that you can or should not be sharing online. I don't know where some people come up with these. The Price is Right is ending after host Drew Carey endorsed the keto diet pills on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Apparently that's going around on Facebook. It's not true. Good pull. Good pull there. Why, why would this Why would this be the thing, the item, the sole decision that brought down arguably the greatest television game show in all of history? Do you know how many days you as a young boy or girl got through your sick day with, with chicken noodle soup, perhaps tomato soup, watching Bob Barker and the Price is Right? It's not going down because Drew Carey endorsed keto diet pills. It's got to be one of the longest running shows in the history of television. And I can understand why. Right. Because it is entertaining. Give me that game of Plinko any day. You all wanted to play Pink Plinko too. If you got called down and you won the bid and you weren't that jerk that just bid a dollar over the ass person, don't be that individual. You wanted Plinko to be on the other side of that red curtain, didn't you? We'll find out after we get you caught up with KF Joe News with Paul Jurgens right now. KFGO News, Fargo more hits 69 degrees, overnight 50 and partly cloudy. Governor Walls has signed a comprehensive veterans bill to help move the state toward ending and preventing veteran homelessness. The bill provides around $25 million in service bonuses to veterans and Gold Star families and pays more than $10 million for veterans' homes and veterans' cemeteries. The bill also includes money for enlistment incentives for the National Guard. Bail has been set at $1.5 million for a Red Wing, Minnesota woman charged with leaving her newborn son to die beside a lake nearly 20 years ago. Investigators say Jennifer Matter also abandoned another infant in the Mississippi River earlier uh, years earlier. Matter appeared in court on second-degree murder charges in the 2003 death of the boy whose body was found on the shore of Lake Pepin. The Goodhue County Sheriff says DNA evidence proves that along with the death of the boy, Matter is responsible for the death of a baby girl found in the Mississippi in 1999. Charges have not been filed in that case. A federal appeals court has ordered that, the, that a case between Planned Parenthood and the state of South Dakota be put on hold until the U.S. Supreme Court issues a decision in a separate case that could overturn Roe v. Wade. The South Dakota lawsuit is over a rule pushed by Republican Governor Kristi Noem that would require women to make three separate visits to a doctor to take abortion pills. Planned Parenthood argued that the rule would have ended its ability to provide medicine-induced abortions. South Dakota is one of 13 states with a trigger law that would ban abortions altogether if Roe is overturned. For a third time, the Minnesota State High School League has voted against adding boys' volleyball as a sanctioned sport. The vote was close, says reporter Al Schott. 31-17, one vote short of approval. Last spring's vote was too short. Boys volleyball is a club sport among Minnesota's high school-age student-athletes. Officials say there are 55 club teams in Minnesota with about 1,400 boys taking part. The effort to sanction boys volleyball as a high school sport has received some high-level support, including University of Minnesota volleyball coach Hugh McCutcheon, along with Governor Walls and First Lady Gwen Walls, whose son plays club volleyball. Minnesota has offered girls volleyball as a sanctioned sport since 1974. Fargo Moorhead near 50 overnight, a partly cloudy sky, 76 tomorrow. We'll have a chance of showers and thunderstorms. Those rain chances increase by Thursday, partly sunny. Good chance of showers and thunderstorms near 80. And Friday, partly sunny, KFGO. Meteorologist Tom Shemansky is expecting right around 70. 69 sunny, Paul Jurgens, News Radio, KFGO. Here's one that stood out to me in the number of text messages that you choose to interact with this show, which I very much appreciate. 
I consult in North Dakota provides that for you at 35270. Tyler, if your religion is going to be forced into my home, I have no problem protesting outside of yours. Comes in. Um, and there's another one about uh, views on the Supreme Court. It, it, one thing I saw earlier today that, and this is across the board, this included uh, Republicans, and I say that just because of the lean of the court now over the last few years, that people's perspective of the court, court and their opinion of have tanked. Not something new. I mean, when's the last time Congress had polling numbers above 20? We keep electing the same people, but I mean, the overall opinion of, especially the federal government, is just cratered. I don't know what changes that, quite frankly. I, I don't know if anything will, not anything in the near future. Uh, but I just asked the question of uh, if, if all of a sudden you find yourself in the same uh, community as Justice Alito and you find out people are grabbing signs protesting his opinion that's been drafted, are you joining it? I think if I had to gauge by the, the variety in the text club, more people say, I'm not quite there, that it's not isolated to that, as I just read one that says, I got no problem protesting outside your home, especially with the addition that all of you have sent in, that uh, they said this is perfectly protected by the First Amendment when it comes to this very issue of abortion when it comes to the doctor's side. So if they're going to say, you know what, you can go protest outside their private residence if they're a doctor in this instance, well, you know what, you kind of reap what you sow as a justice in this case as well. I, I just know that there's more being planned for these residents. And when you see a U.S. senator now asking for the Department of Justice to increase protection of those justices, it has you wondering those questions. One thing that um, I'm pivoting here just briefly, you continue to send in your thoughts on that, but this whole Elon Musk reinstating Donald Trump on Twitter, I mean, if you didn't see this coming, I haven't been probably paying attention. Perhaps that's why, when I ask, I don't get why all the panic set in for people of, oh my God, Elon Musk is buying Twitter, all is doomed. And for some people, this was the end of everything. Because you got the guy that owns Tesla, a rich guy that has rockets setting up buddies up in the space, buying, buying Twitter. And I, I didn't understand the panic then. To be honest with you, I still don't necessarily know. And with this decision... Again, I find myself not in that, oh, my God, it's happening, all is lost. Now, here's why. You know, there has been a ban on Donald Trump from Twitter since, was it January 6th or the day after? And he was using it in a means of which clearly I didn't agree with, didn't sit well with me. If you were listening to that unfold in real time during the show, you know that. Uh, but just because he didn't have his own account didn't mean he didn't have that platform to spread what he was saying and thinking anyway. Now, well, hear me out here. Because allowing him to get back on, I shrug my shoulders. You know what? He's been effectively using this platform regardless of having his own account or not. Because, and this is going to get some of you cheering, saying, Tyler, you're finally seeing the light here. Because anytime he puts out a statement, Regardless of the topic, if it could be that way he says Happy Mother's Day. Now, you know how he goes on to say Happy Mother's Day. It'd be like, to all the haters out there and blah, blah, you've, you've heard it before. But he doesn't have to get that onto Twitter with his own thumbs because ever since he's lost access to Twitter has been shared widely with those that still have access to it anyway. You know what they do? They get his email that is of the statement from the official office of the president, 45th president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. They screen capture it, then they tweet it out anyway. So sure, he hasn't had his own Twitter account, but whatever he wants to get on Twitter, it's been on Twitter. And it's been on Facebook. And it's been on what other failed platforms he's tried with his groupies out there. So I don't understand the panic. That people have said, well, now he's going to have this wide-ranging reach with all those on Twitter and those on the far right and those extremist groups. He has never lost contact with them is what I stand from here. 
from what I've observed, because even though he hasn't done it himself, he still has had the ability to get that message out to everybody he's wanted to get it out to it anyway. So let him back on, Elon. I don't think it changes anything. Sure, it's going to be in the news cycle like it is right now. You get people talking about Twitter, saying how wrongs are being right, and they're corrected now with his new ownership once he gets to the keys of the, the offices here. But this decision, why some people are so worked up, I just don't see it. it. Because what he was gearing towards in the way of which he's able to really manipulate and drive in the narrative, that didn't go away because he lost his username of at real Donald Trump. He just had other people doing it for him. 35270. You could also t- call in at 237 5948. Tyler, isn't it against federal law to try and influence a judge's decision? That's an interesting addition to this conversation. Uh, one that uh, somebody else had texted, and I'm going to use that to, to piggyback on when I Tyler as a grandma or grandpa, uh, as my grandpa would say, pardon me, I apologize. Uh, why do people got ants in their pants when there's still nothing done yet on Roe v. Wade? Basic, uh, it's foolish to worry about it when the Supreme Court has not made any decisions, don't you think? I'm going to disagree uh, on the decisions not being made. I think the decision is made. It just hasn't become finalized yet. And that's why, are they are they influencing a judge's decision by doing this? I don't think that anything changes what was out there. That's why, and I know people are angry at me again yesterday, saying I'm so unreasonable, uh, that you can't prove that it was a left side or a right side that did leak this. But that's the case being made as to why maybe it was somebody in the majority that leaked it because you locked them in where they are now. It's an interesting addition. I appreciate that uh, to this conversation. Are you concerned that Donald Trump's getting back on Twitter if he chooses to now that Elon Musk says, sure, I'll let him back. This was wrong in the first place. Let me know. I'll come back to that conversation. We'll have a little bit of fun in the final half hour as well. Talk Tom Brady and other things. Wrap up on Tuesday afternoon right here on KFGO.
on a Tuesday afternoon. Thanks for keeping it locked in on 790 AM, 94.1, and 104.7 FM, KFGL. I just said, look, I don't see what the big deal is. What's the hype? Donald Trump's come back to Twitter, so what? He's already been effectively using it anyway. Uh, and that's what's being echoed in our text club. Well, Tyler, I don't think Trump being on Twitter is going, going to matter. It goes on. Buckle up. Because 32% of the people in this country who believe him already has cult members. He's not going to attract any new followers because he's already found all the idiots, comes in uh, by one of your fellow listeners here. To the underlying point of people already know uh, Donald J. Trump, whether he's president or celebrity apprentice host or, you know, pick anything. And people know him, his brand, his angle, the way he talks. I don't think him having access to this again changes anything. That's that's just where I'm at. Now, if you can tell me why you are concerned that he is going to get back on that platform, I mean, I'm, I'm open to listening to you. I just, again, I, I come back to the fact that he's already using it. He just doesn't have his own account. And some of the other people that are around him that have been trying to. Was it Mike Lindell, the pillow dude? That was once Elon Musk bought it, uh, using air quotes, because I, I don't know if anything's been finalized. I don't know if the ink's dry on anything yet. But he tried to get back on it. And he had a video from Musk in his private jet, whatever, saying, hey, I'm back on, on Twitter now that this is going to be right. He got banned within a matter of minutes. So for all those eight... Free speech has come back with Elon Musk. Well, if he does have any control as of now, which he might not, it didn't last long for good old Mike Lindell, who's still out there talking. Everything's got to do with him. He's about the reason he said this. Mike Lindell, you probably have his products, or if not, you've seen a number of times people have been trying to get you to listen to other radio stations. Please listen to us. We'll give you a my pillow. But he's out there. He said that the reason why this leak happened of the, the subject that we've been talking about off and on since that Sunday of Roe versus Wade, the decision that's been drafted, he said that he believes the reason why that was leaked is because he's uh, so close to getting the Supreme Court to uh, take up his clay, claim that the 2020 election was rigged and that it was stolen and that there was voter fraud, all of that nonsense that he's still peddling out there. So there are still those bands of people that are out there doing this. I don't know if Elon Musk, now that he's come on, said, well, Donald Trump, he'll get back on. I don't know if that's the same thing for good old Mike over here or for Roger Stone or others. But it hasn't really mattered because they still are getting everything that they want you to hear or have your eyes peered upon in front of you. It, it it's, it's one means out there now i get it and when i talk about platforms that i spend most of my time on twitter's the one that i do spend most time on because i do follow journalists i follow other people out there that utilize it to get out pieces they've been working on so i can follow along i get that the tool is there for good and you know what sometimes it comes with some bad i'd pro- I, unless something just completely tanks it if donald trump comes back on i'm not Gonna all of a sudden, well, there I go. You're gonna lose me as if they care anyway. Uh, but it just seems as though every time that there's some little uh, variable that might shift things just ever so slightly, the world starts burning all over again. And I just don't get it. Take a breath out there. 35270. And join me there as many of you are doing again today. And I appreciate that. This one, I don't understand either. And I'll get it. The, the contracts. To, to do play-by-play or color commentary, yeah, they've gotten larger, especially for the NFL. And Tom Brady, who retired, spent some time with his family, decided, I better get back in the game here. I really just need to be on the field and not at home. Well, he's made the decision now and signed a contract by your accounts out there that even when he's done on the field, he's going to be in the press box for Fox Sports. You know that the, the main number one crew for usually America's Game of the Week that they force-fed you Green Bay Packers or Dallas Cowboys games every week. Well, Troy Aikman and Joe Buck, they're going on. They're going to be, I believe, on ESPN. I think they're doing the Monday Night Football games. So enter Tom Brady, whose contract to call football games for 10 years. We just can't get rid of Tom Brady. 10 years, $375 million. 
to be doing all this uh, on Fox Sports. That's eye popping. But it kind of makes sense. Doesn't the guy want to have just a little bit of time to think of before he just dives right into the next thing? We'll get your thoughts on that as well. Plus, your thoughts coming in about Trump being back on Twitter. I can get one more up before I send you over to Paul Jurgens. Uh, Tyler Trump stated that he will not get back on Twitter if the ban is lifted. I didn't believe Trump uh, since he lies often. You're right. He did say that. I think somebody posed the question. I mean, he's got his own platform that was supposed to be competing with his anyway. Didn't Devin Nunes, the guy that sued the cow on Twitter, like Nunes cow, he's supposed to be taking over or has taken over the Twitter equivalent of Donald Trump, and it apparently hasn't been going so well. Is he going to keep up to his word if Elon Musk lifts the ban? I don't know. Only time will tell, and I say no matter what, it doesn't matter. Get your caught up with KFJO News, final half hour of After Live. Whatever you want to get off your chest, I'm here for you. I'm Tyler Axis. You got it locked into 790 AM, 94.1, and 104.7 FM, KFGO. On News Fargo Moorhead, we have a Sunny Sky and 69. I'm Paul Jerkins. Bobcat Company is planning to build a new skid steer loader assembly plant in Rogers, northwest of Minneapolis. Bobcat says the plant will mean an additional 20, 225,000 square feet in production capacity and enable the company to streamline efficiencies in the Midwest. The company plans to fill more than 100 new full time positions at the plant this year. The company's corporate offices are in West Fargo. Bobcat already has manufacturing plants in Litchfield, Minnesota, Statesville, North Carolina, Bismarck, and Gwinner, North Dakota. Every member of the Minnesota State Patrol now has a body-worn camera. Colonel Matt Langer says the statewide project began in December. So this deployment was really significant. It was large. 705 total body-worn cameras were deployed, along with 644 upgraded squad video systems that overhauled our complete video system from top to bottom for the organization. Langer says if there's a question about a traffic stop or event, the patrol will have a record of it. He says it's something state troopers wanted for a long time. 69, this is KFGO News.
69 degrees. This is KFGO News. A proposal to add boys volleyball as a sanctioned high school activity in Minnesota did not get enough votes today from the state high school league. The idea failed on a 31 to 17 vote. That was one vote shy of what was needed for approval. A similar attempt last year failed by two votes. The number of licenses for this year's deer hunt in North Dakota has been reduced because of an outbreak of a viral disease last year. Cayman Fish is making 64,200 licenses available, down 8,000 from last year. The drought last year created perfect breeding areas for biting gnats to transmit the disease. It affects white-tailed deer more than mule deer. The disease also impacted the success of hunters during last November's gun season. Senators Amy Klobuchar and Tina Smith are among those behind the bipartisan push for more money to address the bird flu outbreak. The Minnesota Democrats have signed a letter pointing out that highly pathogenic avian influenza has been detected in 32 states and has killed more than 36 million birds. The letter to the Senate Appropriations Committee says the outbreak has serious implications for poultry producers, small towns, and the agricultural economy. A man facing a possible life sentence on federal drug and money laundering charges has won the lottery in South Dakota. 45-year-old Canby Thompson was featured on the state lottery's website for winning $40,000 on a scratch-off ticket. Thompson earlier pleaded guilty to the charges, which resulted from a drug bust in Sioux Falls involving 11 pounds of meth and seven other people. When police pulled Thompson over last year, they found drugs in his car. He also admitted he was part of a money laundering scheme to hide drug money. Fargo, Moorhead, partly cloudy. We had a look for an overnight low of about 50. Tomorrow, partly sunny. Chance of showers, breezy, maybe some thunderstorms, and 76. Thursday, also rain chances. Partly sunny, good chance of showers and thunderstorms. Near 80 degrees, and then partly sunny Friday, 70. Sunny, 69. Paul Jurgens, News Radio, KFGO. I'm going to clean up a couple of messages, and we'll switch gears after CBS National News. Uh, Tyler, he stated, Trump said he wouldn't go on Twitter, and Trump's word is solid as Sears. Oh, wait, Sears isn't solid, is it? It's so- you. This message came in solid as Sears in quotations. Was that like a jingle of theirs? I'm curious, was that their advertising? Because I don't recall. I'm generally curious, so send me back if you have the answer. Another one for you before I let you go here. Uh, Tyler, we are a nation of red and blue bubbles. Heaven forbid something would come along and challenge the integrity of anyone's bubble. Narco won't uh, die from a foreign adversary. It'll die from within, comes in. Thanks for sending in all your messages today. You can continue to do so in this final 25 minutes. We'll come back with a variety of things. Have a little bit of fun as we get you into that 5 o'clock punch out. The Drive Time News, Jack Sunday, going to steer you right into Twins Baseball. Chris Atterbury, he's taking over these airwaves at 6 o'clock. They are home, taking on the Houston Astros tonight. Right here on your home for Twins Baseball, KFGO.
Wyatt asked one of our uh, coworkers here that you're going to be hearing in just a little bit. Solid as uh, Sears. I'm just, uh, I've never heard that saying before, so I don't know if it was one of those that was common and we haven't heard it, but uh, I appreciate getting some of these things. Oh, yeah. That reminds me because I talked about a uh, Weezer having their first album, the Blue Album, that came out on this date. Uh, uh, what was it, 1990-something? I don't recall offhand. No, actually, you know what? I got it pulled up right here. Uh, Weezer's debut album came out 1994, back when Weezer was good. I said that they had a lot of bangers on that album, and a uh, message came in because uh something I said last week. Tyler Hoy, let's chill with the uh, banger nomenclature, which I applaud you for texting the word nomenclature into this program. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it was a little over a week ago. I believe you called Ninja Rap a beggar. Just saying. And just saying is correct. And in fact, I admitted on air that same day that Vanilla Ice's Ninja Rap that was on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze, I admitted I was wrong. I don't shy away from admitting sometimes when I'm wrong. And in that one, I was. And I found out and discovered how wrong I was with the rest of you live right here on KFGO. 35270. Number of messages in. Somebody switching gears on us. That's fine. I said this final 25 minutes. I'm here for you. Whatever you want to talk about. Uh, Tyler, why doesn't Biden just come out and say that his agenda to phase out fossil fuels and this will be the price of gas from now on, I think is where it's supposed to go, but it, it cut off. Uh, or no, I didn't. Pardon me. I'm uh, confusing with another one because this beloved text message club, which I know you're tired of hearing, but I'm hoping that they're hearing it and the, the people that have the checkbook upstairs. And I'm sure they'll be waiting for me at my office when I get out of here at 5 o'clock. Um, when, I, when I left for Minneapolis Sunday to get on down there, and of course I told you what we were able to do yesterday. Madison Quinn does have that video, I believe, at Facebook. We'll get it up at KFGO dot com as well can critique my swinging form with a baseball bat not pretty but effective at least two times um when i left 399 is what i left at the the price at the pump when i got home last night when i was driving back through and 399 was an increase from the 389 just what felt like a couple of days prior uh, and when I was coming back yesterday, especially on the Minnesota side, the price was already over four bucks. You know, four oh nine. You know, here or there. When I left this morning, still three ninety nine. When I got back over lunch, which is like eleven o'clock, four nineteen. That's a big jump, boys and girls. And the thing that I come back to were some of the things that finally were 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 change and i know that it, there's people that are saying well it's not good enough and this is what these narrow windows when you've got congressman armstrong on and i appreciate he does come on and and whether you agree with it he most of the time provides an answer now you're going to say well you didn't today on whether or not you would vote for a federal ban on abortion and you're right he didn't provide a direct answer but i wanted to ask about this because we've talked about what oil companies have been allowed to do where they can drill what they might be required to sign on certain lands and one being federal lands and i had said at the start of this russian invasion from vladimir putin into ukraine if there was a time to offset what was going to be a result at the pump because of this war uh this is the federal lands was an issue that he could look at saying i know what i said i know what i promised coming into this administration but times have changed. The globe's changed because of this situation, because of Vladimir Putin. It took him a little while, but he did. He allowed for some new leases on federal land. And that's what a lot of people on the right side and within the oil industry were begging for. Open it up. Let us drill, baby drill on some of that federal land. That is the land that you and I own, by the way. All of us collectively own that land. Uh, well, so we did. And they still complained about it, the oil companies, and those that are carrying the water for the oil companies. God, it did take Ron Ness of the North Dakota Petroleum Council to find any microphone that was on 
and say, well, this isn't good enough. Well, okay, you asked for it, you got provided it, and now what? So that was one aspect, saying, you know what, we're going to open this up, and hopefully that's going to help you at the pump. The other was uh, the release from the strategic reserve. Okay, we're putting out a lot of millions upon millions of barrels from that, injecting it out there, so it's supposed to impact us at the pump in the positive way. So what is it now driving this? Because the ban on Russian oil is there. You've got the ability to uh, drill on, on federal land. That's something you're begging for, and now you're allowed to do it. Albeit you're griping, saying it's not good enough of a deal for you, even though it's our land, and I don't have an issue with you having to pay us a little bit more in royalties. And then you got the reserves. So what is it now that's driving this up? Is it just the summer months? Are we switching over? I mean, there's even the 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 changes when it comes to E15 going forward. But whatever the combination is right now, it's either not working or there is something else out there impacting this. And if it's about maintenance on some of these refineries out there, the timing could not have been worse for you and I as consumers. 419 overnight, a 20 cent jump at at least the one gas station that I looked at today. This is the traveling time for a lot of people. And for those that have the camper that might want to go somewhere, I'm wondering if any of you are starting to reevaluate your summer travel plans or for the holidays, where you might go or where you might say, well, that was the plan, but now that this is taking a turn this way, is it impacting you or are you a part of that group that it doesn't matter how much it is, yeah, we're going to bitch and moan about it and I'm going to be right there with you as I am right now, but we're still going to go forward with the day-to-day. As far as the phasing out in the text uh, club that came in, Saying that that's the sole, uh, well, I shouldn't put words in your mouth, but saying claiming that the phasing out of fossil fuels is what's going to have the price of gas going up from now on. Is it a factor? Uh, I'm saying that some of the changes have been out there from the administrative standpoint to try to offset that. And it's either not working or the industry isn't doing something on their end. And it's not tough to point out how many record profits have been made over the course of the last few years, either. Going to get you this last weather update from Two Tall Tom Schmansky. We'll see what's coming up on the Drive Time News with Jack Sunday. Again, he's going to be steering you right into Twins Baseball. They're taking on the Houston Astros. That's at 6 o'clock pregame. First pitch, 640 right here on KFGO.
A lot of text messages today. I appreciate you all out there enjoying the conversation at 35270. Uh, somebody did ask, uh, I made a point, and it's something I didn't get a chance to look up, but referring back to uh, our conversation with Congressman Armstrong at the top of the show, uh, Tyler Armstrong said oil was $99 a barrel. I wonder what the historic average of gas is normally at that price. Fair question. No answer to be provided today, but maybe we'll do our homework and provide that tomorrow. So that's my tease for you to be listening then. Uh, other messages that Tyler, no gas lines or shortages, plain and simple gouging and greed. Uh, Tyler, interesting that barrel of oil is down $3 this week. Well, and that's the other factor here, folks. Um, when we had Gene LaDucer, he's usually my go to on all things gas, triple A. You know, what are you seeing out there, Gene? What's the industry saying to you? Uh, well, he's traveling today, so we weren't able to have this conversation with him. But the last time I had him on was exactly that point. When when gas took its first jump, price per barrel shot through the roof because, again, of that Putin invasion in Ukraine. But then it simmered down to about $100 a barrel. And I think the last time I checked, we're still at, and if that's what Armstrong said today, you got a better memory than I, and I appreciate that, it's about $99 to $100. So we have stayed quite steady at $100 per barrel for oil. And if that's the case, again, then why are we seeing these large spikes of 20 cents overnight? In 12 hours, we're seeing that jump. Something is off here. I think we are owed an answer because there's been measures taken and steps undertaken to try to alleviate this, and we're going the wrong way. Uh, one more for you. Then we'll see what's coming up on the drive time. News Jack Sunday. A Tyler Big Oil is an unregulated utility. Just ask Texans. Oh, that worked out. When private industry can gouge, they will. Then Republicans pass the tax break, so they all have a windfall again and again. Well, I think uh, one of the things that's becoming abundantly clear from a lot of your uh, opinions is the fact that there's price gouging going on. I mean, you cannot deny that profits have been increasing rapidly from that industry. Profits being made during this time. So if that's the case, you know, is it price gouging? Industries say, of course not, but certainly that's how you're feeling out there. I appreciate you sharing that here on KFGO. I'm about done for the day, but that doesn't mean the program is over because you got Jack Sunday uh -oh. in studio. He got a full line for you. Oh, yeah. We, uh, we're we packed, and we have a full hour. That's why we call it the uh, Drive Time News Hour here on KFGO. And, uh, I mean, right out of the chute, we're going to have, uh, of course, the CBS News and then Paul Jurgens. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, we'll have Too Tall Tom. Can't forget First, about Too Tall. Yeah, we'll have him, and then... Uh, We'll go into Paul Jurgens and uh, Paul Lines with news and traffic, respectively, and uh, sports with Derek Hansen. And uh, and Jason Benson is going to be back again. He's the Cass County engineer. Yeah, good My guy. first question I'm going to have for him is, uh, has anything changed in the two hours since you were just on <laughs> with Tyler Axmith? <laughs> Hopefully he says, yes, conditions have improved substantially. Yeah. And uh, – what the heck else? So we'll have another ride with Joel Heitkamp. Oh, yeah. That's all in the first half hour. That's why we say it's all the news you need for your drive home. And uh, Rusty Halverson's uh, going to be checking in as well with Ag. Big, yeah. And there. There's we're going to have our markets. On all fronts here, yeah. And especially sports. You think, I mean, you got twins, but also the Wilder back in action tonight. That, <sighs> were you watching the other night? I know you're a wild fan here. Yeah, I, I yes. You know, in fact, I, I, I was sitting with a – Friend and I was complaining about the, the two goals we gave up to the, to the open net, you know. Yeah, I know. You know yeah. And I was whining about that, and my friend said, Jack, you hate hockey, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, I love hockey, but I hate that open net. But I know it's, you know, it's... Well, I know, I, well, yeah, and, and I, happen, I know I'm wrong. Well, I happen to be down at, uh, in, in the city, so I've, I found a spot where the wild games on. Of course, I was everywhere. But the place that had a lot of wild jerseys. In fact, I'm going to be a, I'm going to immerse myself in mm -hmm. you fans here. And they were calling for that goalie to uh, goalie to be pulled two minutes before oh, yeah. he was. Yeah. 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 Like you got to pull him decision time. Yeah, I know. And I'm like, and yeah, the, you're right. Real, I don't, <laughs> real hockey fans look at me like, what are you? What, what planet are you See, from? What, that's where I'm at. You know, I, I I enjoy this time of year. I I just didn't grow up getting into hockey, but now with to to have the fans and explain it, I'm like, okay, I get this. Not yeah. what I would have. I would have I would have been with you. I said, yeah, no. Yeah. You can give them. Now all of a sudden, you're, there's no way you're coming back in this game. But why do they call it the five hole? 
It's a question for another day. Eric Johnson, you got an answer? You're a hockey guy. Yeah, it's uh, so if you see in the driveway kids practicing with a plywood sheet and a goalie painted oh, on it, yeah. there's four corners and then between the goalie's legs. So one, two, three, four, five hole. We both learned something today. It's not even done. five o'clock. Wow. Really? <laughs> well, great. well, you and I, you and I would be having a lot of fun watching this hockey game tonight. That's the impression I'm getting. Nobody's ever fired back with the answer before, <laughs> so I'm going to check it out. Yeah, there you I'm go. going to Google it. I can't no, wait till the next time. Here. Jack Sunday goes. You know why they call it the five hole, right? <laughs> That's going to happen the next time. <laughs> Eric Reese is a fan. <laughs> uh, Jack Sunday's got the draft time news that kicks off here in about three minutes, folks. That is it for me today. I'm Tyler Raxis, your host here on Afternoons Live. I will be back tomorrow for more of the show. Tell then you take care of yourselves. I'll check in tomorrow right here at 790 AM, 94.1 and 104.7 FM, KFGO.